Hi there, welcome back to Hot Kitchen. I'm Wendy, and we're here to share with you a delicious menu to spice up your next romantic date night at home. On tonight's menu is a barbecue feast. We'll have a rack of ribs. On the side, cheesy fire corn, homemade baked beans, and a nice light little fruit salad to round it all out. Now those ribs are gonna take a while, so let's get going on those now. You're gonna to wanna to start by rubbing the ribs with a whole bunch of spices. I'm using about a half tablespoon of chili powder, a half tablespoon of paprika, and a little bit of cinnamon for fun. Now ribs are full of all sorts of fat and connective tissues, so that means that they're gonna do really well with a low and slow baking process. First step with any rib recipe should be to hit it with a nice spice rub. Rub it in there really good. Now there's lots of methods for making ribs. There's really as many methods for making a good batch of ribs as there are cooks out there. There's dry roast rough methods, and there's methods that involve boiling. This is sort of a fusion of those methods. We're gonna start with the dry rub, and then we're gonna put it in a bath of delicious beer, and we're gonna roast it very low, very slow. Choose a beer that you really enjoy Pour it into your pan. That's gonna add so much flavor. Use a full beer, don't skimp on that. And of course, like with anything, you wanna give your liquid a chance to coat the meat entirely. Seal it up tightly with another piece of foil. This is gonna seal in the vapors that are gonna be created by the low and slow roasting process. Make sure you seal it nice and tightly around the edge of your pan. And then when you've got it all sealed, go ahead and throw it in the oven. I've got my oven set to a medium, very uh, medium, very low temperature of 250 degrees. And these guys are gonna take two, three, four hours. You wanna cook them until the meat is just positively falling off the bones. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to start working on your baked beans. Now traditionally baked beans are made with great northern or navy beans, regular old white beans, but I thought it'd be fun to try it out with some red beans. Not that I taste a huge difference between the different types of beans, but you know, red is always a fun color to work with. So the next step is these have soaked overnight and now it's time to simmer them. Beans will take anywhere from 35 minutes to an hour to cook completely. And with this sort of recipe, that's not really what you're after. Season up the water with a bit of salt. Bring it up to a boil, drop it down to a simmer, and simmer them until they're fairly tender, but not quite mushy. Because they're gonna spend some time in the oven cooking above the ribs, so they're gonna come, they're gonna come around and become that perfect texture. That's why it's important not to overcook them in this first step. Well, hey there, let's take a look at these beans. They've been simmering for a while. Let's check the texture on them. Get the colors still there. And yes, they're hot. And they squish and compress. And let's taste them. Mm-hmm, very good. They break apart easily, but they're not totally mushy. So now you wanna drain them off. I've got a colander here in my sink. Just get the water off of them. Bring it back over here. Then I'm gonna start working in the Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is my preferred method for making something like this delicious dish of baked beans because it goes so easily from burner to oven and it just does beautiful things. So that's two slices of bacon right there. I've got in my Dutch oven. I'm gonna be rendering the fat out of them. Once the fat renders out, we'll start adding in some other ingredients. Mm. So you can hear that the sizzle has slowed down and there's a nice little pool of lovely bacon fat in the bottom of this. So now it's time to add the next set of ingredients which entails some chopped onion, approximately a half cup's worth, and some seasonings. I have a half teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of thyme, 
a half teaspoon of basil and a half teaspoon of parsley. Get that going in there, get those guys all aromatic and happy. Ooh, that smells very, very nice. And just when you have the onions all coated and the flavors are all men melding together, go ahead and add those beans in. Make sure you're using a gentle touch, a folding motion, if you will, to mix the beans into this. You can need a tablespoon of good mustard. Now the type of mustard you choose is gonna have huge weight on the end result here. So make sure you go with a good quality one. I'm using a classic brown mustard. That was a tablespoon's worth. A half cup of brown sugar. Make sure you firmly pack that. And then approximately a cup of chicken stock. And then stir and fold these together. Get that mustard and brown sugar all incorporated. And fold gently to avoid smashing up your beans. Now you want to bring it up to a boil and make sure it's good and hot before you put it in the oven because the oven's at a nice low temperature. So you want to put it in at a very hot state. And if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can skip that for this step and just use a regular saucepan and transfer the beans to a casserole for the baking. There we go, there's a nice happy boil. So now it's time to put a lid on it. And then put it in the oven with its little rib friends. Open the door first and put the little Dutch oven in there. And the beans should be done at about the same time that the ribs are done. Well, everything's all together, so let's get started on the barbecue sauce. You're going to really like learning how to make a homemade barbecue sauce. We're going to start out with a little olive oil in the pan. To that, we're going to add a clove of chopped garlic and a bit of chopped up onion. Stir those around, get them all good and coated in the sauce. You don't have to worry about really cooking them at all. This is going to be pureed up. And then while that gets going, let's talk about how the chili peppers come into play here. So I am using dried guajiro chilies. And this is what they look like when they're dried. You reconstitute them in a hot water bath and they turn into this. Look at how cool that is. You can even see the colors on the pepper. And then I took them from the hot water, drained them, and chopped them up, and left the seeds and cores intact, because that is going to give us the heat and the complexity and the pepperiness. One other important thing to note is to save the water that you reconstitute the peppers in, because you're going to need it to thin the sauce. So let's add these peppers into the party. Again, just want to give them a quick little flash. Just enough time to make good friends with the garlic and the onions. And then bring in the tomato paste. This is one six ounce cans worth of tomato paste. You want to use tomato paste over tomato sauce because it has a richer, fuller flavor, a little bit sweeter too a tablespoon of good mustard, and again, the quality of your mustard is critical to the final outcome of your sauce. So choose a good one. A little stir here. That's fun. Now we're gonna thin that out with some liquid ingredients. I have an ounce of molasses. It's gonna add a nice, rich, deep sweetness to this. A half ounce of vinegar. I'm opting for red wine. You can use whatever you have, whatever you like. A half ounce of booze, whiskey, brandy, rum, all great choices. A teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce to enhance the meatiness of it. And for fun, about a quarter teaspoon of liquid smoke flavor. And finally, a half cup of brown sugar. Again, firmly pack it. Bring the sauce to a boil and stir it all together. Fold and blend and think loving thoughts of your sweetie and your awesome date night that you're gonna have with this delicious barbecue sauce. Once it hits a boil, you're good to go ahead and puree it. 
So you're gonna need a blender. You can either use a traditional blender or a stick blender. I think the traditional blender is gonna do a little bit better job here. One thing about the dried peppers is that the skins are a little leathery, so you do pretty much have to puree whatever you put them in. But you are rewarded for your efforts with a rich, full flavor at a very economical price. Of course, you're dealing with a very hot substance here, so put that lid on firmly. Press down with a cloth and start by pulsing. Give it a few good pulses and then turn it on. Reach in there with your spatula. After pulling the lid off, scrape it down a little bit and repeat one more time. And then replace the lid. Put your cloth back on top. Push down firmly, pulse again. And then take the lid off and scrape it back into your saucepan. Remember to scrape the lid because there's a lot of sauce stuck on that. This is going to taste so awesome. Now, while homemade barbecue sauce is an incredible creation, you can see with the peppers and pureeing and whatnot, why a lot of people just buy a sauce. However, like with many things, the homemade version is always better. Now, for your final thing, you can see that this sauce is pretty thick, so go ahead and pour off some of that chili water under there to thin it down. The chili water is going to do double duty of adding flavor and making the sauce very manageable. And just let that come up to a simmer and then turn off the heat and let it sit. The next step, we'll be putting that on the ribs. And like any good sauce, you're gonna wanna test it and adjust the seasonings. Mmm, mmm, so tasty. I'm gonna enhance that goodness with a touch of basil and a bit of salt. Now let's move on to the corn. The first step in the cheesy fire corn is to create a boiling water bath. To that you're going to want to add a whole bunch of milk and about a cup's worth of sugar. And to that, go ahead and add a couple ears of nice corn that you have of course shucked and prepared for boiling. Now bring this up to a boil and then simmer it for about 15 minutes. You're gonna love the way that the milk and sugar enhance the sweetness and flavor of the corn. Let's see how things are going in the oven. First thing I wanna look at is the baked beans. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lid off here. You can see that there's still quite a bit of liquid in there, and that's no way to have baked beans. That's an easy fix. What we're gonna do is leave the lid off and turn the heat up and cook the water out. Now let's get these ribs out. Hmm, let's take a look at these bad boys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, my. Let's see how they respond to a fork. Oh, oh yes. Nice and tender, falling off the bones. Mmm, buttery, so good. This is gonna be awesome with the sauce on top of it. I'm gonna turn up the oven to 400 degrees, and then it's all about these ribs. I'm gonna start by slathering some gorgeous sauce on top. Put a whole bunch of love in the sauce. Now you want to put that love on the ribs. Use a basting brush to get it all nice and spread out. And then take these ribs and flip them upside down on your grill. Slide this over here next to the grill. 
This is very tender. And I'm going to attempt to get it all on there in one piece. By sliding my utensils under and just sort of flipping it on there. There we go. And then slather the other side as well. Well, you can smell it getting all nice and smoky in here. All those spices are being activated. The sauce is going to caramelize a little bit. And your sweetie is going to be putty in your fingers after a batch of ribs like these. So just let that do its thing. Keep the temperature on a medium high. And then while that goes, you can start working on the corn. Go ahead and pull the corn out and place it on a broiler pan. Brush it lovingly with some butter. Mmm, -hmm. corn and butter together just doesn't get much better. Make sure you get all the sides. You're gonna need at least two tablespoons to do this. You can use as much or as little as you like. There we go, nice little rotation. Well basted lovingly with butter. Add some fire to it, this is a little bit of chili powder. Just kind of lightly sprinkling it on there. I'm going to rotate the ears of corn, make sure I'm getting the surfaces. I don't want to make this ridiculous hot, but it, there is going to be some cheese involved, which is going to help to kill the fire. It's going to come together very nicely. And then bring on the cheese. I have a very finely grated Romano cheese here. And I'm going to try to get it all on the top of my corn cobs. Very yummy. I recommend using a hard and pungent cheese for this. And that's why I chose Romano. And then finish them off with a little dusting of salt and pepper. Finish off that flavor profile. Then we're gonna need to put them in the broiler. Now in order for me to do that, I have to get these beans out, which are incidentally cooked down just right. Go ahead and put the lid on there so they retain their heat. And I don't want this to be too close to my broiler, so I'm going to adjust my rack. Carefully place this in the oven. I don't want them to roll around either. And then turn it to broil. Keep a close eye on it. We're going to come back over here and flip the ribs. I use my fingers here and give them a nice little gentle flip. Oh, well, I'm just going to kind of work these back over here to the hot spots on my grill. Oh, doesn't that look good? Let's hit it with a little bit more of this awesome barbecue sauce. Mmm. Love that. I love adding a little more barbecue sauce on top of the caramelized bits. Just really seals in that flavor. And now with the ribs flipped and the corn broiling, let's toss up a little healthy something to go along with this delicious meal. How about a little fruit salad? I chose three fruits that strike my fancy. Some kiwi fruit, about seven strawberries quartered, and the fruit of a mango. I'm going to get a little sassy with it and toss it with about a half ounce of rum and something creamy. In my case tonight, I'll be using a little bit of heavy cream. Creme fraiche, yogurt, mayonnaise, sour cream, those would all do the trick too. Add a little bit of sugar, maybe a teaspoon or so, a tablespoon or so, something like that, and some walnuts. Nice little stir. This is going to be a lovely, refreshing, and summery accompaniment to the very rich barbecue feast. Oh, that looks delicious. I'm super excited about it. 
Oh, perfect. Let's get this corn out of the oven. That is looking yummy. Oh, it's perfect. Have a nice little crust of cheese on top of the corn. Now we're about ready to plate. Start by putting the yummy corn on there, cheesy side up, of course. Then let's check out these beans. Nice and thick. All sorts of yummy chunkiness in there. Nice little scoop of those on each plate. Oh, those are going to be perfect. Really happy with those. You've got to try this out. And some ribs. Nice little chunk of the ribs. Let's turn off all that obnoxious grill stuff. I want to plate the fruit salad too because it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. Very delicious. Highly nutritive. Very good complement to this meal. So what do you think? Is that a barbecue style feast that you can make for your sweetie? It's all scaled down for two and perfect for your romantic date night at home. So pair this up with a nice red wine like a Zinfandel or a Merlot, or if you're feeling a little bit lighter, a Pinot Noir, and call in your sweetie. Mmm, barbecue time. Barbecue time. Wow, uh -huh. look at that. Oh, it's a labor of love. Mm. Mm. Oh. All for you. Wow. It's a homemade sauce. Mm. Oh, it just comes apart, uh -huh. doesn't it? Mm hmm. Mm. Falling off the bone. Love your ribs. Mm hmm. Yay. Mm. And homemade baked beans, mm. too. Wow, those are good. Oh, this is just coming off the bone here. Mm. Mm -hmm. You're good. You're so good. <laughs> this is such a hot kitchen. <laughs> so thanks for joining me in my hot kitchen tonight. Have fun turning up the heat in your kitchen. And I'll see you next week. Night-night.